All right, so today we're gonna to talk about RX Vega. I know there's AMD Threadripper and AMD released all their specs and information about Threadripper and RX Vega, RX Vega 56 and 64, which is in representation of the amount of compute units that the GPU has. So there's two of those and they're supposed to have a tier of performance on the 1080, which a lot of people were like, yeah, Okay, so it's just a 1080. 1080 was released a year ago, and it trades blows. Like, it doesn't straight up beat out the 1080. It's more like, oh, well, it's gonna win some, it's gonna lose some. So that's kind of where it's at right now. Should we just be looking at the benchmark numbers? Because there's just more to that than just the average. I mean, average FPS is not everything, and that's what I want to talk about today to kind of uh, maybe reestablish any sort of lost faith you might have had with that press release of what RX Vega and what to expect from it. So we're going to talk about that and why you should be excited because I am and I'm very excited. So let's get into that. And yes, this is a uh, this is a new setup, and I will be having a transition video of the old setup into the new ones, new backdrop. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into the rest of the video because without further ado is a overused term that I'm gonna use here right now. Let's get into it. What's up guys, my name is JD from JD Tech here and welcome back to the channel where we discuss PC passion, tech reviews, unboxings, and setup design. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. So today we're gonna to be talking about RX Vega as I just said. So yeah, people were kind of disappointed in it and they're like, meh. I guess I'm gonna wait for Volta. But yeah, I wanted to talk about the RX Vega card because that's what I'm more excited about. I'm very excited about AMD Threadripper, but I think AMD has proven a lot of ground with the Ryzen 1700 and the R7 chips and everything else beneath it as well. So that's kind of already a discussed topic, but RX Vega I think is it can be a little bit more interesting for the kind of uh, potential it can offer. So here's the thing. The thing about RX Vega, I don't think it's just in the average FPS. It's also the 1% lows or those frame drops or that stuttering, the screen tearing where, where you have the frame dip really low and then jump back up high because when you have something going on on the screen, like if you're playing GTA 5 or anything and you blow up a car or something with a rocket, you'll notice that the frames dip a little bit because now you're putting a bunch of stuff on the screen. The screen has a lot more to render alongside with the CPU as well, but the GPU is also tasked as well with, with more going on at the screen. Uh, say for instance, like playing Forza Horizon 3. If you're in an open desert, it's it plays really smoothly, but if you go into the city and you have to render all the cars and the buildings and just everything that's going on and all the people passing by, there's a lot more stuff to render onto the screen and puts a task on the GPU. So you're gonna see those frame dips. Now where the RX Vega card is going to specialize, I personally believe, is in those 1% lows. Now what RX Vega is really unique about, or not just unique, but what they really focused on is they have a memory caching system. So they cache this memory, like storing it. Once you have that available memory in the storage and something pops up on the screen, now the GPU can access that cached or stored memory so that it doesn't have any sort of latency by accessing uh, the memory itself. It's already cached and ready to go. Think of having uh, a car, right? And you have to get gas. Now you could drive all the way to the gas station, which is three miles away, or you could have your gas jug right over here and fill it up right then and there. And that way it's gonna be a lot quicker. That would be your cached memory versus having to go to the gas station and grab your gas that way, and then finally you could drive your car again. So there's gonna be a lot less latency between the jug of gas in your trunk versus going all the way to the gas station. So that's kind of what it's like. Secondly, not only is it really good in that 1% lows, but also the bandwidth that you have with that HBM2 memory. Now, HBM1 memory, or high bandwidth memory as it is in its own name, was available on the Radeon R9 Fury, which was a beast card. Now, the only issues that they had was with the stability of 
that type of memory. That's why they can only push it to four gigabytes, or at least that I know of. They couldn't really push it more than that. They're innovating, they're taking steps, and this is a big step for AMD. And now alongside with that HBM memory, this is HBM2, so you have that high bandwidth memory. You can, you can really access a lot of information at a given time with that massive amount of bandwidth and that's another thing that makes me very excited for the RX Vega cards and where that will exactly translate into gaming performance I am not exactly sure I can't tell you 100% because that's not my specialty but I can guarantee it can have a lot of practical application for having such a high amount of bandwidth you can definitely pass more information through with that high bandwidth memory and that's really important because um, it not only does this make it a great gaming card, it also makes it a great workstation card. So if you wanted to use this for computational purposes, you can do that as well. So not only is AMD offering this really nice, uh, or just a meh, as some people like to put it, graphics card for gaming, but also one for workstation and computational work loads and tasks. So having that as well, you have a very well-rounded GPU. Also, uh, if you notice, they have an RX Vega 56 and an RX Vega 64, which is in translation to the uh, compute units, as I said earlier. Those compute units are very important when it comes to multi-processing and dealing with a lot of information that needs um, simultaneous processing with a bunch of different cores. That's the surface of my knowledge right there where that goes, but the compute units are, are important and it makes it a very versatile card, not only for gaming, but again, for workstations. So uh, once you combine that with, with the Threadripper CPU, you have an entry level workstation uh, computer that doesn't cost you over $10,000 which is pretty amazing. It makes it a very compelling statement to having a workstation, entry level workstation PC as well gaming PC. So this, this makes it very versatile. It's not only gaming, but also a lot more functionality that extends beyond that. And I think that's what makes me really excited about this release. And I think you should be excited about that too if you're an enthusiast on all levels and not just gaming. Of course, if you are just looking for gaming, this might disappoint a little bit, but it's also uh, exciting at the same time because it's been a while since AMD has stepped up into the enthusiast grade hardware for like a really long time. So yeah, that's why you should be excited if you're into all that, you know, PC enthusiast grade level hardware. I am, I'm not gonna be reviewing it, obviously, because I can't afford that, but you know, maybe down the road, you know, like 10 years from now when it's like 45 bucks on eBay, maybe, maybe I'll review it. I'll just be a little bit behind, but that's okay. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully that can clear up any uh, confusion or any lost hope or faith that you might have had in the RX Vega card and kind of explaining where its strengths are, not just average FPS. There's always more to look at than just that one dynamic because you can have total tunnel vision on it and just say, hmm, it, it's okay, I guess. But if you look at the all around perspective, it looks pretty good to me at least. And also, you know, FreeSync. FreeSync is awesome. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to see more videos like this, remember, consider subscribing and also like the video if you liked it, disliked it, if you didn't like it. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to stick around for just one more minute, I'll talk about my setup a little bit as there will be a official dedicated video for this alone. Yeah, I, I got a gaming chair. Yeah. Not that I really like gaming chairs or the racing style ergonomics, but it keeps me in a very good posture for when I'm sitting at the desk at long hours doing editing and whatnot and coding. So having that is uh, vital for my health, um, especially when you have a chair that doesn't even meet your back halfway. So yes, that's what I'm sitting in and I have a custom made desk, custom made panels and my setup is all changed. Boxes are gone. This is a new era of JD Tech gear. But there's cool little lines behind my head and I sit in this this black and white racing style gaming chair with lumbar support and side bolsters. Like, yeah, I will be posting an official video of this transition showing you guys what it has changed into and showing you JD Tech Gear 2.0, I guess, as a new level of professionalism and level quality overall for the channel. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. I hope you guys like the background. 
let me know if you do. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for sticking around.